Welcome. Thanks for joining me. This is a four minute Tai Chi lesson on what kind of shoes should you wear. First, I just want to tell you that to get started in Tai Chi, you really don't need anything special. And I find that to be one of the beautiful aspects of Tai Chi. It's always with you. It's always accessible. And you can do Tai Chi and practice Tai Chi anywhere at any time. Now, having said that, let's talk a little bit about shoes. Most people wear some form of tennis shoe and they're pretty comfortable with that and it's okay to get started. However, most tennis shoes have a degree of rise in the heel. And this rise has a dynamic on our alignment, on our postural alignment. So if I take these blocks and I stack them and they're on a nice level surface, then, you know, it's not so hard to be aligned. And I can do that pretty effortless. And that's what we want in Tai Chi is to be effortless, not effortful. However, if I take the base and I raise up that heel just a little bit, like we have in our tennis shoes, now the whole rest of the spine and the whole rest of the posture has to accommodate and modify to accommodate that slight angle at the base. And so this is what we've been doing the majority of our lives, simply based on the shoes that have a heel rise, which is probably 99% of the shoes out there nowadays. So we're working very hard to just stay upright and not in a good postural alignment. So you can see that if we have a zero drop shoe, then we're flat on the ground and then we're better able to align our posture and with less effort. So over time, you might want to look into what's called a zero drop shoe. And that type of shoe has no heel lift whatsoever. It's just flat. And then that would give you better ability to have an upright posture stacking that, that spine in an effortless way. The other aspect of shoes today is that they have this silly little uprising of the toe. But as you can tell, if our, it's almost like a cast. If our toes are slung upward like that, then we can't get them on the ground. And in Tai Chi, we want our feet cupping and touching the ground, again, effortlessly. And if I'm in a shoe that's curving my toes upward, then that's never going to happen. So once again, if you look for a shoe that does not have that upward toe swing, and that's going to be even more challenging to find because I would say 99.9% .9 of the shoes, percent of the shoes out there have this upward toe sling to it. So just start looking at shoes and assessing them. You'll be surprised. A lot of my students ask me, well, what do you wear? And I wear a 100% leather shoe. And the reason is, is there is electromagnetic uh, field coming from the earth. And I want to benefit from that. And I don't want anything to disrupt that flow. And rubber, which is on most shoes, are uh, insulating. They don't allow that conductivity. And so leather does. And so these are very pliable, soft shoes. They're leather soled, and you can see that I have done a lot of Tai Chi in these. And they have a nice combination of giving me traction when I'm deeply rooted and in my Tai Chi stance and moving. However, if I do my Chen style Tai Chi, then I can still slide on the heel a little bit uh, and have that slideability where on a rubber shoe, I would not. So, you know, it's... Uh, it, it can become more and more refined as you become more and more refined in your Tai Chi. If you go from having worn something like this for years and years and years, you might not want to jump right into a zero rise because your body's going to go, whoa, what's this? And you're going to feel off balance. So take it easy, take it gradually. It took me about uh, two to three years to work down to a, a zero rise shoe and to feel comfortable with that. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you found this to be informative and I hope to see you in one of my live streaming classes in the future. Have a great day.